It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Kyle Benedict as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives in Yavapai County. And now here's today's Countywide. Today, we are sitting down with Kayabab National Forest archaeologist Neil Weintraub. Welcome to mm -hmm. studio. Thanks for having me. Jackie Banks sent me an email, I don't know, a couple weeks back, mm -hmm. and was, says it's archaeology month yeah. in March. And I said, well, I think last year we talked Red Rock Ranger area, uh, Red Rock Ranger district, kind of the archaeology there. And I know we've had some of the other folks in town, but Kayabab National Forest, I don't think we've done too many shows with the Kayabab. Not that I can remember. Right. I've been there for 25 years. So. Yeah, I know I've had Jackie in once or twice, so I thought, okay, this time we're going to we're gonna talk Kaibab National Forest, because as we were talking before the show, it's just an hour away. Oh, yeah. It's a, you know, right? it's a short drive up I-17 or through the switchbacks. Mm -hmm. and uh, Beautiful drive. Take, oh, it's gorgeous. And yeah. uh, you know, a lot of the, the eastern side of the forest is uh, even less than an hour away, where we're going to talk a little bit later on about mm -hmm. uh, some of the hikes we're going to be doing uh, out on the forest. Right. It is Arizona Archaeology and Heritage Awareness Month. These really nice brochures, you should be able to find them in your state park office, uh, forest service offices mm -hmm. will have them as well. And you said you can download them as well off of uh, azstateparks.gov. Yeah. So it's uh, also dot com. Dot com. It's 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 located there as well. So uh, let's get right into it. First of all, what is it that you do for the Kaibab National Forest as an archaeologist? So, so for uh, almost a quarter century, I've been an archaeologist for the Kaibab, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, basically my job is uh, uh, surveying for archaeological cultural resources uh, sites uh, throughout the forest uh, ahead of fires or timber sales and. Uh, we are basically uh, doing our jobs as protecting protecting those resources. So, it, if there's a wildfire, you go out and do you check the area in front of the mm -hmm. wildfire for archaeological sites? Or, exactly. Or, okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, often we used to go out actually in front of the, the front line. We actually would walk in front of the bulldozers, making sure that uh, none of the surface archaeological sites would be uh, affected by mm -hmm. by the dozers. Um, uh, today, uh, on the Kaibab, we do a lot of uh, management of, of fire, um, especially if we have an area where uh, it hasn't seen fire in a long time, like the Sick Reeves fire, mm -hmm. and uh, we feel we can safely manage that under the conditions uh, that are appropriate, so usually in monsoon season when we have the moisture levels up. Right. And uh, I rarely ever see the fire anymore because uh, as, as the fire staff is working on uh, preparing those uh, areas for, for the fire, um, I'm out ahead of the fire spread, uh, trying to identify areas areas that are uh, uh, sensitive archaeological sites, such as cabin foundations or railroad uh, logging grades. That, How many of those are found each year? Because I know during during the slide fire last year, we had some pretty amazing finds. Were yeah. You, were you involved in that? Uh, no, I wasn't, no, okay. but my coworkers were. Okay. And, uh, you remember colleagues. there was like a cabin up mm -hmm. there? There was a cabin. Yep. Yeah. And there I believe really it was one of the interesting things found. Yeah. And so you know, one of the, uh, for me, one of the most exciting parts of the job is working with the firefighters. Mm -hmm and uh, making them aware of some of the resources that they might encounter. And so I believe in that situation, it was actually one of the firefighters that uh, found the cabin foundation and they took those actions to protect it. And mm -hmm. So that's exactly what we're doing on these fires. But um, like I say, I rarely ever see the fire anymore because right. I'm moving around and uh, working with crews to do that kind of proactive protection. Uh, How often do people call in and say, hey, I think I found something out here? Does that yeah, happen on a regular it, basis? It happens on a regular basis. Yeah. Often with uh, our, it's you know, usually our own staff, um, but also our permittees, our uh, the ranchers that we work with, that uh, who have allotments on the forest, and, mm -hmm. and they're uh, great about telling us about things we don't know. We have a we manage uh, on the Kaibab 1.6 million acres, oh, and wow. uh, okay. yeah, uh, we that. feel fortunate as a land manager to have uh, six six archaeologists. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, there, there's still a lot of ground we haven't covered. We've only seen about 30% of the forest, so we know there's a lot that is more. A, it's hard to think that only 30%, but then it, it is. 6 million it, acres, it, I mean, that's a lot of land. Yeah, and, and I've walked a lot of it. Right, 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 <laughs> but, I'm sure, uh, right? There's a lot, a lot more left to be seen, and uh -huh. so that's the exciting part of the job is uh, 
really knowing that uh, there's there's thousands more uh, sites that are out there. What's your greatest discovery since being with the Kaibab in the quarter century you've been there? In the quarter century, boy, yeah. I'll tell your you greatest, what, there, your greatest your greatest uh, find of all time. I you know one of one of my favorites was actually being on the North Kaibab Ranger District in 1993, and uh, we were surveying in some wilderness and. I uh, actually had a volunteer with me that made this discovery. Uh, I just happened to be about 30 meters away, but it was a really neat pictograph uh, rock art site that uh, had been placed there probably four or 5,000 years ago. Oh, wow. and, and it still looked pristine. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, those are the types of places. I love finding those kind of undisturbed areas uh, that are pretty remote. Buried uh, and hidden and forgotten yeah, all these yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, and so then we can document that mm -hmm. and keep an eye on it and, uh, you know, make sure that it stays in in a good condition. So. As you walk around, what, what are you kind of looking for out there? We're looking for uh, potsherds and uh, remnants of where people once what, lived. What kind of catches your eye, though? What is Usually the, the obsidian. On the on the Kaibab, one of the first things that uh, catches my attention, especially in the Williams area mm -hmm. in the Tucson Ranger District on the south rim of the Grand Canyon, usually it's the obsidian. Oh. So uh, we have volcanic glass that occurs in areas uh, on the west and east side of the district. Mm -hmm. And so that shiny black uh, obsidian really pops out at you. Why? Uh, just why, why is that it, a key, though, to it, look at it, for? It, because it indicates that people had been flaking, had been breaking up stone. Oh, okay. And that was probably one of the most common artifact types that uh, people worked with was, you know, collecting these uh, obsidian cores, trading them. We find uh, uh, the obsidian from our local, from our forests uh -huh. scattered throughout Arizona. A lot so of tool making trade. That? Yeah, lots of tool making okay. and uh, lots of trading of, of that material. Huh. So um, that's always a good indicator because it, it seems like people were carrying a desirable material mm -hmm. to these different places. And so once we spot that, that kind of catches our eye and then we start to see the pieces of pottery. But the pottery that we find in the Williams area is gray. It often blends in with the soil on the ground. Oh, now why is that? Is, so, there, is there a difference why it's gray? Uh, it's the volcanic materials okay, that are used okay. in, the, in, in the process, in the firing process. You see so many, well. I guess I see a lot of Sedona pieces. Down here you see red, a lot of the red, red and the brown yeah. wear, and yeah, that's just uh -huh. a, a, uh, really a result of the, the geology of the area and mm -hmm. the clays that are used. Yeah, so it makes total sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but we're also interested uh, in the forest, uh, the forest's uh, recent history, mm -hmm. and uh, of course that's... Uh, that goes back to the early days of logging and, and transportation in, in northern Arizona. And so uh, we often find cabins and foundations and logging railroad grades, which we have hundreds of miles of old ties that are still 100 years sitting on the ground. And you oh, can follow no those uh, railroad grades throughout the forest. And so we'll talk a little bit about the YCC, but that's where they've really, the Youth Conservation Corps has uh, really come into hand uh, over the summers. We've used them to clear those uh, historic railroad grades of fuels so that they don't burn up in fires uh, when we have them. I'll be darned. Maybe we've got enough time before we take our, our first break here. We've got a couple minutes for you to do that. You mentioned Sick Reef's fire. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we should just kind of recap Sick Reef's fire. When was it? How big was it? And, right. and its importance, I guess. Yeah, well, what was uh, really interesting for me in this, the Sick Reef's fire was uh, um, it's an area that's uh, got a lot of cultural resources, a lot of, a lot of prehistoric sites. And so we were very interested in seeing how, you know, what would the fire do? Um, especially low intensity fire, what that does is it cleans up the forest floor. Sure, sure. And gets rid of the needle cast that often can lead to uh, larger fires. Right, right. And so that happened in, uh, I believe it was mid-July. And uh, we had a lightning strike uh, up on top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an area that for purposes of firefighter safety, uh, our fire staff did not necessarily want to p put people up there uh, in harm's way. Sure. Um, especially on the steep slopes, you can get the uh, roll, what they call rollers that come down and, and get behind the firefighters. Very dangerous. So, yeah. um, but at the same time, it's a big area, and once that decision is made, we're going to have to work with that fire for quite some time to come. And, and as it turned out, almost a month, month and a half, I think, mm -hmm. or five weeks. It took a while. And it took a while. Yeah. And uh, so it was a long-term event, put a lot of smoke in the air. Um, but as it turns out, uh, you know, it was on, done under low intensity to moderate intensity conditions. And we just saw some really wonderful resource uh, benefits from, from that fire. Awesome, awesome. Let's take our first break. Neil Weintraub's in the studio today. He's an archaeologist for the Kaibab National Forest. A uh, good number to keep in hand, 928-635-5600. Uh, to find Kaibab National Forest on the Internet, I could read the... Uh 
the web address, but better off just, just Google Kaibab National Forest. It's countywide back in just a couple minutes. <laughs>what I'm Paul David, Kaibab National Forest archaeologist Neil Weintraub in the studio today. Uh, March is Archaeology and Heritage Awareness Month. This brochure available online as well as uh, through your Forest Service office or State Park office. Uh, number to have handy, 635-5600, area codes 928. And then uh, we're going to be talking about some keyhole sink hikes a little later on the program. Mm -hmm. And that's a good number to call if you want to make a reservation for something like that. We're going to move on to the Williams YCC, the Youth Conservation Corps. Tell me about these folks. And yeah, they mean so uh, they mean a heck of a lot to me. Um, so uh, actually the first program that we're doing uh, is this evening at uh, uh, Cafe 326 on Route 66 at 6.30 this evening. We're going to talk about the Williams, uh, the contributions of the Williams Youth Conservation Corps. Okay. Uh, they're a bunch of high school students that we hire every summer uh, out of the local area. Sometimes we have students from Parks and Ash Fork as well. And uh, they've been instrumental uh, during the summers, uh, uh, not just for archaeologists, but for our range staff and for our fire staff and, and timber staff. They, they actually help uh, do some of the forest project uh, work. So they, they get to, they get, to pay, get paid while they actually uh, learn about That's the forest. That's a great summer job to get paid, it's especially because usually fabulous. these things are kind of volunteer, usually, it seems like. Yeah, but often those entry-level positions you want to break through, you end up volunteering You've for, the, your for the Forest Service or an internship. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so this is an on-the-job training uh, for these students that may want to go on into resource management or forestry. And uh, in our case, we actually get them uh, for a few days every summer. Uh, we're fortunate to have that. And uh, we try to put them uh, onto jobs where we're protecting archaeological sites or doing fields treatments around mm -hmm. archaeological sites. So kind of explain that. Well, what is it that they're doing when they, when they come out there? Right. So uh, we have these logging railroad trestles and logging railroad grades. And so one of our goals, a lot of those areas have not seen fire in, in over 100 years. And one of our goals is to actually uh, make it so those uh, historic sites are more defensible against, uh, against fire. Okay. And so what we have the, the kids do is basically uh, rake the fuels away from those historic properties and, and make sure that uh, if we do have an event that 
will actually have a little bit of a chance to to survive sure. that kind of uh, fire. But uh, it's a lot of a lot of work, and uh, they, but the the students seem to really have a lot of fun with it. We that. talked about that before the show too. You were talking about how they come out and help with the resources and stuff like that. And I was kind of thinking. I was picturing. I told you. Uh, Bunch of kids show up and have a party at the Petroglyph right. site. You know, we got the graffiti going on, and we have that problem as well. But right. but then you said, no, 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 they're they're clearing vegetation and stuff. And then you said defensible space, just like we asked the residents to do around their home. Exactly. We're doing the same thing out there for these archaeological right. sites that we want to preserve right. and hold on to that have and, managed to survive thousands of years. Right, and and uh, and as, well, especially the historic ones. A lot of the uh, ones that have survived the thousand years, the artifact scares we were just talking about, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe some of the stone pueblos that we've talked about. They they've seen fire you know we had a I pretty so. pretty regular over the last uh, you know thousand years since those sites were occupied uh, fire moved through the environment in a, every two to twelve years or so in a mosaic pattern mm -hmm. um, but so just about everything has uh, burned over probably a low intensity low to moderate intensity uh, but it's the cabins of the historic period when uh, the Forest Service started suppressing fires uh, uh, in their early 1900s um, that those are the types of sites that can disappear real quick under uh, gotcha. in fire. Yeah. Gotcha. Now this Youth Conservation Corps, I imagine it's a, a unique group of kids that probably even come forward, or how do you find out about this? Because do we, I, I would imagine each force yeah, each forest, each forest probably often, has their own yes, youth corps. Yes, often okay. uh, some of the, the other forests have their own youth So how do you go about doing that or encouraging kids to get involved right. in that? Right, so Young just, people, just say, this probably. way, we, we uh, it's uh, pretty well known in the Williams area, um, and the kids often hear about it word of mouth, and we go into the schools and, and let them know that that opportunity exists. Mm -hmm. And uh, the county, uh, Coconino County Rural Environmental Crew uh, Corps actually uh, was in charge of that for a while, and so they would do the recruitment. Um, but often it's word of mouth, and sometimes Forest Service uh, um, employees have kids that, that get involved, get their friends involved, and mm -hmm. uh, really a uh, popular thing to do. You, we usually have anywhere from six to eight students a, a summer. And uh, What are some of the requirements? Uh, Can I be an F student? What's that? Can I be an F student or a D student? Or uh, is, is there anything requirements like that? You know, I, I think you've got to be a good student mm -hmm. um, and uh, mostly dedicated to to getting out there mm -hmm. and uh, showing up from eight to eight to four every day uh, or seven to seven to four every day and uh, uh, just being diligent. Do some hard work outside. Yeah. All right, um, let's talk about. Um, the keyhole sink hikes. Oh yeah, those are coming yeah. up real soon. You said you've got them planned on March 14th and the 28th. Right. So, okay. uh, what is the keyhole sink? So that's a petroglyph site. Okay. Uh, probably petroglyphs that were made by Native Americans about a thousand years ago. Okay. A uh, real beautiful place. It's a uh, box canyon that's right off of historic Route 66, about a six tenths of a mile hike. Uh, and it's uh, this time of year. It can be spectacular. Uh, there's a waterfall flowing right now. We went out there yesterday and took a look. And, Ryan's uh, actually putting pictures of that oh, on the screen while we're talking. Excellent, so, yeah. excellent. Uh, and uh, the, you know, so depending on uh, what the weather is, we never cancel it. We've held it in heavy snow. We've held it in heavy rain. No matter what, uh, huh? No matter what, we go out there because uh -huh. the the petroglyphs, uh, you know, are really something to look at and. Uh, you know, if there's heavy rain or heavy snow, there's a good chance we're going to have that waterfall going, and, and that's a, a really beautiful sight to behold. It's amazing how the outdoors change depending on what the weather's doing. Yeah. You know, you, it seems like you never see the same thing twice. You never do, and, you know? and that's that's really what I love about uh, Keyhole Sink is uh, there's an aspen stand as you enter there, and so obviously in the spring when it's greening up, it's a light green, and mm -hmm. then... Uh, in the summer, uh, you have the monsoon rains that, that green everything up, and then Kills in the fall leaves rattle, it turns. Right? In, what's that? The, the leaves rattle in the summer oh, yeah, with the breeze. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, and then uh, in the fall, the aspen turn golden, and so you've got the greens and the yellows, and yeah. and then in the winter, you've got a nice little cross country ski trail that you can take into the Box Canyon. And, so what kind of petroglyphs are in here? So uh, there's a, see? a variety. Of... A lot of them are actually. Uh, it seems to represent the critters that uh, still thrive in that little. Box oh, yeah? Canyon in okay. the water, so you'll see uh, um, motifs of uh, snakes, uh, little frogs. Whenever we go in there, and uh, if you sneak in real quietly, you'll hear the frogs chirping. 
Um, and so th that, that's basically what you see. But the magical part of, of Keyhole Sink really is the petroglyph that uh, seems to depict a planned map of a hunting scene almost a thousand years ago. So there's an uh, outline of the lava flow that looks like a keyhole. That's why we call it Keyhole Sink. Gotcha. And uh, you can actually see that somebody had pecked into the rock four or five deer and it looks like somebody's hunting on the outside of the keyhole. So it's almost like a story that somebody was telling. Oh, wow. uh, the deer being in the in what was really a, almost a natural trap. Uh, but you know, you can see you know, right around the edge of the water. You can usually see deer prints and, and coyote prints, and, and that's, and, and that's exactly what you see on the on the walls. Wow. Okay. Now you you do you do the hikes. Yeah, I okay. lead the hikes with uh, my oh. other, uh, the other archaeologists that okay. I work with, and uh, it's it's a really fun time. It takes about two hours round trip when we start talking about. It. We also talk about the history of the forest in that area. Uh, Let's come back to that. We're gonna take another yeah, break. Okay, absolutely. Number is six three five five six zero zero to make a reservation. County wide will be back in just a couple minutes. Every proper bear knows that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Oh, really? I just did what any bear would do. So know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size. I like it. To learn more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Oh, hello there. Oh, where's that bear? <coughs> Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah, I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. Headaches and back pain are two of the top reasons people choose Mosing Chiropractic. Dr. Mosing also treats symptoms of numbness and tingling, as well as those injured in auto or work accidents. Dr. Mosing uses gentle chiropractic techniques, as well as electric muscle stim and cold laser therapies. Call Dr. Mosing today at 634-0733. No spine left behind at Mosing Chiropractic. Welcome back to County Y. Just a little bit of time left in the program. Now, phone number again, 928-635-5600. Uh, you can also go to Kaibab National Forest. Just Google that, and there's information about the uh, Keyhole Sink hikes. Now, during these hikes, Neil, you mentioned that also you talk about Kaibab Forest history. What's a little of that real quick? Right. So, uh, basically, we can actually uh, go into the forest and look at the forest and, and understand how greatly the forest has changed over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, the area where Keyhole Sink was, you don't see the big old stumps that you often see from the early days of logging. Yeah. And so that seems to suggest to us that that area was probably a much more open grassland than it is with its dense trees today. And so that's pretty much gotcha. been a result of a lot of the uh, history of the Forest Service with uh, ranch grazing and uh, the removal of fire from the ecosystem. So it's a really fascinating uh, hike to do. Now the the keyhole sink hikes are those day hikes, night those hikes. Those are two o'clock p.m. 2 uh, okay. right off Route 66, Two about four. four miles west of Parks, Arizona. Okay, and that's coming up on March 14th and the 28th, so just up around the corner. So again, the phone number 928-635-5600. This month in Arizona is the Archaeology and Heritage Awareness Month, so there's stuff going on statewide. Yeah, all and, kinds of things and, to see. And the big uh, event is uh, Saturday uh, in Yuma at Quartermaster State Park, uh, Arizona Archaeology Expo. The expo, and there's lots of hands 
hands-on activities and uh, presenters and displays that uh, it's going to be beautiful down there, 80 degrees, so get out to Yuma. It's going to be nice all over the state. All right. Neil, so nice yeah. to have you come in. Thank you Thank so you much for, for your time. Me. That's today's Countywide, and we will talk to you again next time.